Hello and welcome to Bristol Museum and Art Gallery. I'm here today filming for Festival of Nature. I'm joined by Rian Rosen, Curator of Natural History. Hello Rian, how are you doing? Hello, welcome. Thank you. Museums are a little like icebergs. We only have a small fraction of the collection on display. We have much, much more. Let's go behind the scene and have a look. Brilliant. We have 700,000 wildlife specimens that scientists from around the globe study. It's usually a really active space, but it's not just scientists that study this collection, but naturalists, people who are passionate about wildlife. Artists, photographers, filmmakers and historians study the collection. And if you'd like to study the collection out there, then you're welcome to contact the museum um, and make an appointment. So we could spend years exploring the collections down here because they are so extensive, but today we're only looking at one thing, butterflies. Now, insects are in decline all around the world, in butterflies too, so what can this amazing historic collection of butterflies that we've got here teach us about the current ecological crisis of butterflies in Bristol? Bristol Natural History Collection provides a unique source of historic data that stretches over 200 years, a window into the past that helps inform a future city where wildlife and people can thrive. The butterfly collection is invaluable in piecing together that historic distribution and abundance of butterflies in Bristol and beyond. Each one is unique. We would never collect butterflies in this way today, mm. um, but each one is unique, having been collected from a different place at, the, at a different time. That um, provides clear avenues to understanding the general threats of biodiversity and pathways into conservation. Basically, we'll find specimens in the collection. For example, the marsh fritillary used to fly in Old Market Street regularly in 1850s. So what are the changes today to Old Market Street? Um, and can we kind of have a planned nature recovery network to bring it back? because today the marsh fertility is only in two sites in Bristol. So how have scientists and researchers been able to use the collection that you've got here? Basically, there's a project called Back to the Brink, and it's all about saving the most threatened species in England. Now, unfortunately, the checkered skipper went extinct in 1976. Gosh. However, they needed the data from all the museums and we provided information of the distribution and abundance of the checkered skipper. And so the data started from 1796 to 1976 when it went extinct. And hopefully with this information, it helps to understand why it went extinct in 1976. Also, we have scientists that study the DNA within our specimen. So they'll take a DNA sample and often with the collection, the historic collection, they find that the genetic diversity is much greater um, in the populations in the past than they are today. And that's probably one of the threats. We also photograph the butterflies um, with a measurement scale. And we found that one scientist measured all the wingspan of the butterflies. The wingspan was much larger back in the past than it is today. They believe that that's due to climate change. All oh, right, and so why is it so important that we actually understand the health of our butterfly populations at all? Well, butterflies are sensitive indicators that enrich the lives of us all. Um, the real visual gauges to the health of the environment. And if butterflies are not doing well, then lesser well-known creatures are faring badly too. So have we lost lots of different species of butterfly from Britain? You know, since 1970s, we've lost the large tortoise shell and the large blue butterfly. Shockingly, we've lost five species in Bristol. Gosh. That's the silver studded blue, the Adonis blue. Now the Adonis blue is incredibly beautiful and the high brown fritillary, a beautiful fast flying butterflies. Now those vanished in the 1980s and um, more recently, in 1998, we lost the Duke of Burgundy right. and the pearl bordered fritillary butterfly. That was really common in Bristol, um, as common as the speckled wood, let's say. However, since 2003, it has not been seen. There's also the small pearl-bordered 
fritillary. Now that was never as common as the pearl bordered fritillary um, and it survives in just one site here in Bristol today. There's been a decline in the small heath, that's a significant decline right. over the last 30 years and the loss of sight um, this century is really marked on that species and the numbers have declined in the grayling and the chalk hill blue and the small blue. That's bad news all around really isn't it? Is there anything that we can actually do to try and help our butterfly populations? Yeah, there certainly is. Um, I've been talking about the historic collection and distribution um, of data. The Bristol Environmental Records Centre are the ones that provided me with the information I've just told you. But when you go for a walk, when you see a butterfly, then send a record of where you saw the butterfly, when you saw the butterfly, and what species that butterfly is to the Bristol Regional Environmental Records Centre. And then that way we can notice whether species of butterflies are declining still in Bristol or let's be more positive and they're increasing in numbers. But I do have one more call for action. I was on a walk um, in the woods the other day and I came across three different species of butterflies right close to each other. It was a speckled wood, a peacock and a large white and all of them were feeding on dandelions. So I'd love people to learn to love dandelions because butterflies definitely do. Well, I certainly won't be mowing any of the dandelions in my lawn and I'll be looking out for butterflies everywhere I go in Bristol. Thank you, Ryan, so much for showing me around the collection. And you can keep an eye out for all of the other films and content from Festival of Nature all through this week.